Okay, Addy, since the... <laughs> okay, Addy. <laughs> you, you felt the need to spend two hours responding to my random video when I only have a couple hundred followers. <laughs> okay, Addy. And this is five hours ago. It, as you can see on my phone, it is seven in the morning. So you did this like in the middle of the fucking night. <laughs> All right, let's read it. Let's see what you got to say. I have no idea how to open this response other than to say, fasten your seatbelts because this turned out long. So I'm guessing you wrote it somewhere else and then copy pasted it, right? Because like, it's really difficult to write long comments on YouTube. Um, but all right. So here you did it. Below is a comprehensive response to everything you said throughout the entire video. I tried to get enough of what Vosh was saying in the timestamps for adequate context in the event anyone decides they want to read through this whole thing. But I've already spent two and a half hours writing this. And I don't know if anyone is brave enough to try and make it out the other side of this thing. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that you're at least um, being a little self-deprecating in the start here. At 425, Vash isn't saying this perspective is correct. Just that this is what these young men think they're seeing in large part because the right is telling them that this is what's going on. What we're seeing are impressionable teenage boys who are frustrated with the way the world works but aren't able to specifically describe what it is they're frustrated with in society. Well, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> he's very specifically saying that the left is pushing white men to the right. All right. They, they then turn to what people are saying online. And part of the people who are saying things online are Vosh. So they're getting their ideas from people like Vosh, okay? <laughs> On the left, there's a lot of conversation about the accountability men need to take for their position of privilege. Have you... That This is where I, I get very frustrated. Because it seems like the people who spout off opinions like that, have they could not possibly have actually attended any... Um, democratic clubs or central committees or um, conventions or any even of the the nonpartisan left-leaning um, organizations because <coughs> these conversations very white privilege very rarely comes up in conversation when when we get together to um, organize and do activism we're talking about very specific needs of um, of groups like like undocumented workers or the refugees that are coming in and being mistreated. Um, we we speak very specifically about things that need to happen for various groups of people, um, and so this entire argument just further emphasizes the fact that white men are constantly thinking about white men. And so if they're moving to the right, it's because they already have a prejudice. They already have a prejudice and they want to be the center. They want to be at the top. They want a patriarchal society that has nothing to do with the left. The left isn't pushing them there because of that. If the left is pushing them there because of that, it's simply because they feel like they can't be in a uh, male, white male dominated patriarchal society if they're not conservatives. Well, that's probably true. And they need to get the fuck over themselves because the rest of us are not cool with trying to cater to their fucking needs all the time. On the left, there's a lot of conversation about the accountability men need to take for their position of privilege. And on the right, they're talking about modern feminism infringing on men. Yeah, because 
these types of of dudes always blame women. We're like the we're the white devils, right? <laughs> not all not all of us are white, but you know, uh, women are like the root of all evil for these types of men because they need somebody to blame. They need somebody to blame. They can't um, accept accountability for themselves, so they need to blame somebody, and it's usually going to be women. In the mind of an impressionable and already frustrated teen boy, the claims from the right appear to reflect their lived experience. And the things, their lived experience, their teenage boys, their kids going through school. What lived experience? They haven't lived anything yet except for going to school and, and having their parents. You know, that's the, there is no lived experience for a teen boy. They haven't gone to work yet. They haven't, they haven't tried to, like, uh, maintain a house or, or an apartment or, you know, like, they, they haven't done anything yet. So what lived experience? It, mm -mm. The things... Right-wingers claim are the cause of their issues appear to be present in the discourse on the left. That's some bullshit. That is not fucking true. <laughs> that is not fucking true. This is all gaslighting right here. This is, oh yes, we hate you because all you care about are minorities and women's rights, right? Right? No, it, it, it's uh, the Democratic Party is the Democratic Party because it's because it considers everybody, not just white men. It considers everybody. It's a very deliberate propaganda effort from the right to draw in more people when they're younger, since with that youth comes less refined critical thinking skills and a lesser degree of perspective of the world around them. Well, it seems like uh, that is true in the case of Vosh and yourself as well. That if you believe that this is um, really what's happening, then you yourselves have decided, like you, you have already made this up in your mind that this is how it goes. Because I can tell you I know a lot of Republicans and I know a hell a lot of Democrats. And none of them, not even the Republicans, believe that. Republicans believe more so in, like, traditional evangelical values. But it's not like they're disrespect. Most Republicans I know, all the Republicans I know, are not disrespectful to women. Not like this. Not like, not like what you guys are talking about. I can't believe it, dude. Most of the Republicans I know are just, um, they're just ultra capitalist. They, um, they don't believe in labor. They, um, they, they believe in pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. They don't think that anybody should get any advantages or, um, assistance, like equitable situations such, such as, um, uh, financial assistance in any case, like, they, they don't like entitlements. They want to get rid of Medicare. I mean, I, I, you guys really need to think about what it is that you're saying here. That all of these young men who are swarming to Andrew Tate, you have to understand that they believe in white male supremacy. And you need to stop giving them excuses for why they are drawn to that. Because quite frankly, they're drawn to it because they want to be white male supremacists. Not only has Vosh, okay, this is a 550. Not only has Vosh initiated a massive canvassing and phone banking campaign within his community, but your line of argument here also doesn't consider the way that these young people come across left and right wing positions, the people attending organized progressive or left wing events are already almost unanimously progressive to begin with. It's in online spaces like YouTube, Twitter, etc. 
that the vast majority of kids are finding this debate. Well, I don't know if he if he has done one event. <laughs> I mean, you're talking to a former team lead for Unite Here Local 11, um, and the only reason I'm not still organizing is because I was bit by an attack dog, and I have permanent nerve damage in my left leg. I don't, um, I don't have a lot of love for people who just do performative events once and then act like they're fucking experts in organizing. I was organizing four years before I, I got bit by a dog. I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see how he has people skills. I don't see how that guy can actually phone bank and convince people. <laughs> I don't see how he, he, how he could knock on doors and convince people of whatever issue it is. <laughs> He's not convincing. <sighs> All right, 834. I really think you are both saying the same thing here just with different terms. Yes, these frat guy types are probably raised into bully mentality by their fathers and or broader patriarchal society, and they feel the need to engage in these hypermasculine, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic bully behaviors because they think that's how they're supposed to elevate, maintain their alpha status. And with that, their position of power over others because to not do that is perceived as emasculating. I think there's absolutely an inherent insecurity in living like that. Okay, so what you're saying is that you actually agree more with me than Vosh. Because Vosh's entire argument and the title of his video is the left is pushing these people to the right. The left is responsible for white supremacists being drawn to Andrew Tate. So no, we're not saying the same thing. They were not going to be drawn to the left in the first place. So we have nothing to do with their fucked up white supremacist beliefs. It has nothing to do with us. And why would we outreach to them? Why would we want to bring them in? He's, he's literally pulling the whole uh, Red Brown Alliance bullshit that Jimmy Dore was doing a couple years ago. That's what he's doing right now. 9.50. Oh my God, even, dude. How long is this? You know, I'm not going to keep the comment, by the way, because it's, it's, it's a fucking novel. It's a goddamn novel. I'll keep it preserved as a video for you, but I'm not going to fucking keep this because it's, well, maybe I'll leave it there because it, it bumps the video, I guess. For someone who just accused Vaj of not being a leftist, this is a distinctly liberal ar argument internet law mandates that nobody under eight, the age of 13 be able to access online. No, it's not what I said. They can't use the internet because they're not allowed to sign user agreements. You must be at least 13 to create accounts. You can certainly have 12 year olds looking over the shoulder of their parents or using it with their accounts or something like that. But it is highly unlikely that um, an adult person is going to let 12 year olds view that type of material. We're talking about a human trafficker. I mean, use your noodle. It is highly unlikely that a 12 year old is going to be able to, to come across that material without their parents involvement because they can't even create their own user accounts at that age. Okay. This is undoubtedly the most unenforced law on the books so much so that the fact it even exists is news to me well okay i don't know how old you are but <laughs> i don't know how old you are but um it absolutely does exist and it has been enforced and i've known about it for a few decades consider all the things that you need to do 
in order to actually create an account. You've got to have an email address, first of all. So you start there, right? You have to get your email address. You're going to need your parents' help for that. Um, then you start um, doing the, you know, setting up the online accounts. Um, so in order, okay. So first, starting here, let's let's talk YouTube. YouTube is is a uh, platform owned by Google. So in order to use YouTube, you have to first start a Google account, and it's kind of complicated to set one up. You have to go through a lot of security protocols just to get the damn thing up. So they're going to need the parents' assistance in the beginning to get that set up. This is the same with Twitter. It's the same with Facebook. It's the same with uh, Instagram. You have to go through security protocols to actually set up your account. 12-year-olds can't do that shit without their parents. Their parent would have to be in on it and help them lie. <laughs> if you actually think even 10% of 12-year-olds aren't regularly going online, you're expressing a very poor understanding of the group of people you're talking about, which is ironic considering shortly after this segment, you will accuse Vosh of never having held a real job and therefore not understanding how the world works. Well, um, I was starting to wonder if you have ever raised any children. <laughs> I was a Cub Scout leader, y'all. I have been around lots of little white boys <laughs> that were 12 year olds. And I can tell you that they weren't going online. <sighs> they were learning how to build fires. They were learning how to shoot up bottle rockets. They were running around on their bikes. They were watching a lot of TV. It's worth mentioning again that someone who is making accusations, what are you talking about? I'm responding to his accusations. Is this how we do? A good, a, 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 an asshole gets online, makes a bunch of accusations against the left, and then if I respond to it as a leftist organizer, I'm making accusations? Is that how we do? And that other people aren't real leftists should understand that law is not this magical language that ensures whatever is legislated actually comes to be. You have to think about the logistics of it. It's just simply not how many 12 year olds do you know have the financial resources to buy their own computers or their own smartphones? How, how, how many 12 year olds do you know that um, if they have a smartphone, that it wasn't set up by their parents with some child locks on it. You guys don't think. You really do not think. As someone who used to consume a great deal of conservative... Oh, okay. Well, this is making sense now. <laughs> a great deal of conservative propaganda. It's just kind of like what... what I've Vosh, he's like, I used to be a libertarian. Well, I kind of think you probably still are, actually. Vosh's description is very accurate across essentially the entire online right, from those who try to appear centrist to the open fascists. These are the lines they use to pull in young boys. If you spent enough time looking at conservative content to understand what it all has in common, Vosh's characterization is anything but bizarre. No, it is absolutely bizarre because most children learn about political viewpoints from their parents. Most children, when they graduate from high school, register for the same political party as their parents. Most people seek out content online that reaffirms their existing belief systems. 
There's no convincing. This is reaffirming what they already believe. Oh my God, how long is this bullshit? To say Vash is berating the left in this instance is very hyperbolic at that. No, it's not. Because uh, he's not the only one. Pretty much all of these live streamers that claim to be leftists, the Convo Couch, Jimmy Dore, um, even sometimes Sam Cedar, they spend more time bashing the left than bashing the right, bashing the conservatives. And the reason being is um, that there's some money in that. They think they're going to get a conservative audience by doing that and that um, that it will somehow boost their numbers and that there's more money in selling conservative, talk, conservative talking points than there is in actually elevating leftist ideals. That's why if you look at true leftist channels, they don't have as much following. Like, like look at um, the All-American Socialist or, or look at like David Dole, uh, the, the Rational National. They're not getting as much um, circulation as people who are pushing conservative talking points. Um, and that's simply because we grew up in a country where the Republicans um, sold the idea that if, if you're a Republican, you don't have to pay taxes. I don't think I'm going to read this whole thing because it's so bad. It's really so um, tone deaf. It is so out of touch that you that you would defend his abuse of the left, saying that we are responsible for the conservatives. No, we are not. We are the resistance to the conservatives. We are the ones who say, no, you can't be that fucking inconsiderate. It can't always be all about you. That we have a responsibility to making sure that everybody is healthy and has um, opportunity to be successful. Because currently that is not what is happening. But this is some bullshit that you put this on my wall. I, I, I can't, I, I don't know how OCD you are that you had to fucking do this. But it's gone. It's gone. That's it.